Okay, greetings. Queen Mean Jean here with Escape Poverty Mindset, lesson number two. And today's lesson is one of my favorites, which is manage your money. And when I think of that, I think of when I used to, oh, I always read business books and financial books and things like that. And they always told me the same thing, manage your money, manage your money. There was even the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harp Ecker. And he talks about managing your money. And he gave me the exact formula. Well, he gives you the exact formula in there. And I went to the bank and I opened the accounts and everything. And I still, it was still hard. So I do have some tips about how to manage your money and anybody can do it. Even if you know, you might not have, um, it's not about the income. It's about really more so the habit. And sometimes you do have to cut back. So uh, let's talk about lesson number two, manage your money. So the quote for this um, chapter is, well, the scripture for this chapter is, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others shall be refreshed. And that's Proverbs 11.25. So we all know the power of giving. The more you give, the more people you help, the more abundance that will come your way. So that's no secret. That's pretty much the law of attraction and you know, you have to give something to give some, you have to give something to get something back. So my first subheading in this chapter is stop living beyond your means. So that means if you don't have any money to save at the end of the month, it depends on how you do it, but mostly people go month by month because that's when most expenses are Most things are billed monthly, you know. So if you have um, more expenses than you have and you don't have money to save or you don't have money pretty much to um, do the basic things, your needs, then you're basically living below your means. And um, that can be easily fixed, really. You might not like it and you might require some sacrifice, but that can be easily fixed. And it's all mental at the end of the day, just like what we were talking about in lesson one, everything is mental. So just got to think about it. Just sit and really think like, okay, do I really, what am I really spending my money on? And do I really have to be living the way I'm living? Uh, Maybe I'm not at this level yet. So most of our biggest expenses or living expenses So you can find a way to either rent cheaper or buy cheaper or, I mean, if you really want to get into the investment stuff, maybe even um, living in a property where someone else is paying for, you know, their rent, they're paying you rent, but yet you're owning a property. So there's a lot of ways that you can um, lower your expenses, but of course there's levels and you have to um, stay focused on what you can do today. So just start um, taking some stuff out your, uh, your expenses and that's way easier than increasing your income. But the money management system is as follows. This is the one I use. So save 20%, give 1%, play 10% and expenses 69%. And then I go into each section. So um, this obviously can be adjusted to your needs. So you don't have to worry about using this exact formula. And also this kind of leaves out some of the stuff in the secrets of the millionaire mind. He does say have um, different accounts. Now the one tip that I will give you that I've been giving people who's like, man, you know, it's so hard to save is to open a separate account that you can't touch. Like a account where you're not going to be able to, if you have one bank account, right? And you're not able, and you are able to, if you have your savings account and your checking account at the same bank, and you're most likely using the app, if you were to, it's so easy to transfer it over. I don't know the system you're using, but this is what I think the typical person does is, 
I mean, some people aren't even up on apps. I'm trying to think, but you know, most millennials are people that, um, you know, will use technology. I would think you will have your checking and your savings account at the same bank. And that's what, um, that's the mistake I made. Cause I was at a bank where it's like, I try to avoid as many fees as I can. So it's one, one deposit checking. That means if long as you deposit, no matter the amount at, at one deposit per billing cycle, which is like basically once a month, then, um, you know, your account will stay active and they won't charge you any fees. So I'm like, okay. So I just opened a whole bunch of accounts since it's basically free checking accounts as long as you have a one deposit and you can basically transfer in between accounts and you'll have those deposits even if you don't have a large amount in any particular account. So I think that's what most people are doing is they're, they're the most mistake people are making is transfer, um, keeping their, both their saving and checking accounts at the same bank and, and um, just transferring it over if something happens. I think this is this is my tip, and this took me forever to learn this. I was like, okay, this isn't working. Let me open another bank account, a whole other bank account. And I'm like, the easiest thing to do is to not even get a card for that bank account, my savings account. So I didn't even get a card for it. I was just over it because I kept doing that. I kept taking money from my savings over and putting it into my uh, my checking just you know, like that, especially when you're low on money. So what I did was um, open a savings account. I actually do recommend it. It's at Alley Bank. It's an online bank. And I don't, I didn't get a debit card for it. And I don't touch that money or anything. It's just a separate account. So I really think you should consider opening a bank account and they give you 2% interest and there's no fees and stuff. And they can charge lower fees and do all this because it's an online bank, so you don't have the worry about the overhead, such as running the actual bank and employees. And I mean, of course, they have employees, but you won't need like, um, you know, the basic stuff, the brick and mortar bank where you would have to uh, have all those expenses. So yeah, that's my tip for a saving if you're having trouble saving, and if you are still having trouble saving because your income you have to uh, make sure that you lower your expenses because there is a time where you, we have to think like, okay, I can sacrifice this and I can't do this right now, but just cut something out of your budget. There has to be something that can go where you can save. Um, I say at least if you can do 20%, do 10% um, of each uh, income that comes into you, like any income you get even from your business, they say you're really supposed to just put any income in there. So even if it's like whatever you net from your business, say if you sold a product and you should still put, you know, money aside for taxes and then money aside for savings. And once you open a saving account, you're going to feel so good. Once you start putting money in there, it's easiest for me just to do checks. Checks are easiest because they have a mobile deposit right on the app. So you know, you don't have to really worry about the transfers take forever. Like they take like three days and I just want the money out my account. So I just usually just write a check from my regular checking account and put it in the uh, savings account. And I only have a savings account at that bank. I don't even want a checking account over there because the same thing would happen. So that's a good way to save money. Also, you can do save money in your retirement account as well. I know with Vanguard, they have a, a they have uh, a program where you can basically save money and use it like a saving account and you won't get penalized. So you should check that out. It's like really in the IRA, but it's like basically using it as a saving account. Now, whether you put it in an IRA where you're getting tax benefits, <coughs> a Roth IRA where you're getting tax benefits rather than, um, if that will help too, because you like, you know, you want to get tax crazy if you pull your money out early out of your IRA. So if you can't, <laughs> seem to not do it, but you should really save for a reason, like saving to invest in something or there should be an intention there. You shouldn't just uh, save money because it'll just be dead money. So you might as well just invest it. So save to invest, save for vacation, save for travel, save for um, investing will be the best thing is to stack your money for investing. And they say emergency fund, but I say contingency fund because I don't like to think of emergencies like if you have that in your head, something is going to happen. So I don't even like playing around with that. 
Okay, so that's that on saving. Um, give account, I put 1%, but start off where you can, really should be 10%, but understand. Um, and then your play account, that's basically your entertainment account. And then expenses, 69% or man, 69%, you can try to get that down as low as possible. Try to get your expenses as low as possible and your savings as high as possible so you can save for your investments and then invest and do your thing. Okay, so what other thing do I have in here? So that's pretty much it for that chapter. So yeah, you might have to sacrifice. You might have to get a roommate or find some other ways to kind of get your expenses as low as possible. Um, I mean, or you can do the harder thing, <laughs> which takes more energy, which is increasing your income. I wouldn't say it's harder, but if you know, you don't want to burn yourself out and you want to have time to even, you know, be sane in these times in my life. That's how I know. You want to make sure not to burn yourself out and get crazy. I think your better bet is to just think about how you can cut down your expenses and increase your income at the same time. So I, I don't think you should not because you do have to work and you do, you're going to have to keep creating, but I don't want you to be hustling, then you won't have time to think about your next step and then act on it. Because when you're always in a hustle, you know, you should be, you don't have the time to think about how can I um, work less and still increase my income? You know, you just have to have that mental clarity. So thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next lesson. This was lesson number two, manage your money. And you can get my book on Amazon. It's called Escape Poverty Mindset. It will be linked down below. And see you in the next video.